morning everyone welcome to day two of the resistant starch challenge so i am making today um we'll talk about what i'm going to eat this morning but i'm making for food for the day for my husband and i it's called turkish red lentil soup it is from vegan riches website um and i will put the link in the description box below for you guys for sure um and i did look up on her website because i wasn't sure is it richa or richa or but i looked on her thing and she said it's pronounced like rich a h richa so there we go. I know I'm pronouncing her name correctly, which is nice to do if you, uh, <laughs> it's obnoxious to pronounce somebody's name incorrectly when you um, could take two seconds to look it up. So I did. Anyway, so this lentil soup is actually very, very, very straightforward, very basic recipe. Like you totally probably have all of these ingredients in your house, no problem. So the first thing that you do is I'm actually doubling this recipe um, because it says that it's three servings and I want Anthony and I to be able to eat it for both lunch and for supper. So that should be fine and six servings will probably turn into four for us not too big of a deal but anyways so the first thing that you do is you chop up an onion and you chop up some carrots um and you get some garlic minced so that was actually um you guys know me i'm super lazy about garlic I, we buy it in the huge container at, at costco and use it from that because i'm not mincing garlic like ever it's probably really good like fresh i bet it is anyways so there is my onion and there is my carrots um I'm being very liberal with the vegetables because it, that is probably about twice as much onion as I need and more than twice as much carrot. So it says on there to use four baby carrots for one batch of soup. So that would be eight baby carrots. And that's like 20. So that's not very many carrots. I just figured when you're eating something, you gotta eat the vegetables, so put some carrots in it. So anyways, that's what I have for that. So you cook your onions and the garlic um, Again, the recipe will be down below for you. Um, cook the onions and the garlic and saute them in a pan. And then um, you're supposed to cook that with a pinch of salt. I'm just gonna skip that part, that's not necessary. Cause we're gonna use bouillon in here. So there's going to be salt in it anyway. So I don't need to cook the onions with salt. So you cook that for about five minutes and then you add the carrot um, and your spices. So your spices would be, um, and again, doubling this recipe. So one teaspoon of ground oregano, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one half teaspoon of black pepper it's supposed to be one teaspoon of cumin you guys know i'm not a huge fan of cumin so it's only half of a teaspoon of cumin and then you're supposed to put in one half teaspoon of red pepper flakes and i am going to put in a half a teaspoon of this um chili garlic sauce my husband and i both really like that and it's not too spicy for me typically so i'll probably i might even put in a whole teaspoon i might go out on a limb and be a, be uh, super exciting and do a teaspoon so that's what you go in for there. And it says that you can add a pinch of cinnamon if you're looking for some variety. I'm going to not do that because I've not had it the original way first. So, and I don't really, me, not super psyched about putting in a pinch of cinnamon. So you cook that for a couple minutes. And then it says you're supposed to have a chopped tomato. So in which case, in this case, you need two chopped tomatoes. I'm actually just going to add half a can of no salt added petite diced tomatoes. I'm I try not to be lazy, I really do. But this kind of thing, I don't I don't feel the need to have tomatoes in my house because we don't, I'm the only, well, okay. Connor loves tomatoes. The other two boys can't eat them. Connor loves them, um, but I buy baby tomatoes and he will just eat them like a snack. So I would much rather just have a snack that's available and healthy for him to eat. That's super fast, just pop one in your mouth and you're happy. Um, then have him try to figure out how to cut a tomato. I'm sure he could figure out how to cut a tomato, but it's so much easier to just pop a little one. So I don't ever have big tomatoes or rarely, so we're just gonna use canned tomatoes and I think that will be just fine. And the next ingredient is one to two tablespoons of tomato paste or ketchup. I'm actually, I did not get out the tomato paste. I need to go and get that, so I will go and do that. Um, it's in the laundry room where we have all of our excess stuff. Um, and then at that point, you also want to add in some mint. So it calls for one half teaspoon of dried mint, so a teaspoon of dried mint, which I get, we get this at our local Indian grocery store because it's so much less expensive there and it smells, oh my gosh, so, so good. It smells so delicious. Um, and it says at that step that you can add other veggies or greens at this point if you want to. It doesn't call for any others, but that is what I have chopped up on my cutting board is um, kale. And I have it very, very finely chopped because I don't want the huge chunks in there. I mean, the carrots are really, really small. So it's kind of, they're long, but they're skinny. So they're, I think that will be perfect. It's gonna cook down perfectly. So then at this point, you wanna add in your lentils. So after you've got your veggies all doing their thing, you use red lentils, you add, let's see. So for doubling it, it's a cup of red lentils and then between five and six cups of veggie broth and let it cook. You wanna cover it, it says partially cover it. We'll see, I don't know. 
um, for 15 minutes, then reduce heat and let it simmer for a few more minutes until the lentils are tender to preference. And then add more salt if you want to. And so this soup can either can be served one of two ways. It can either be served blended or the way that it is. Um, I'm going to serve it the way that it is. Both my husband and I thought that that sounded really good. He didn't really want it blended. Um, and it's totally fine by me. I have no preference really and truly to be honest with you. Um, I think blended soups are wonderful and I think that non-blended soups are wonderful too. So this will be great. Um, it does say on her website that you serve it with cucumber slices, which I don't think I have. In fact, I'm, I'm about 100% positive I don't have any cucumbers right now. Um, or warm flatbread. And I do have a recipe for just using oats and some spices to make bread on the stove, and it, a flatbread obviously, and it turns out really, really well. Like it's stinking delicious. But um, I don't know, it's already 3.50, I leave for work at five. I might not have a whole lot of time between now and then to get that done. So I probably am not, I'm just gonna skip that this time, but we'll get that made another time and we'll, I'll show you that recipe. Um, I did not mention which bouillon I'm using. So we're gonna use the vegetable base this entire time for this entire rotation because uh, the no chicken base is um, like 625 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon and this one is 350 so it's almost half and this one has no oil in it whereas the chicken and the no beef one do have some oil in them so there you go that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna go make some soup and I will be back with you guys to uh, do a quick taste test I think it's gonna be delicious it's all really good ingredients the only thing that would be of interest to me that would be kind of weird is the mint and the garlic sauce the chili garlic sauce so I think it's going to be wonderful. Alrighty guys, I will see you again soon. Alright guys, so the soup is uh, finishing cooking right now and I thought I would show you real quick. Um, I've got my kitchen cleaned up, got the dishes put away, all that good stuff. So I thought that I would show you real quick um, what the other two things, well, one thing I'm taking with me, one thing I'm going to drink now. So. I am going to every day, that is my other, every other day for resistant starch, it's not a potato. So that's, there we go. Every other day that's not a potato day, I'm going to have oatmeal for breakfast. Um, and so one of my viewers, Joanna, thank you very much, has sent me some uh, videos on, or some uh, recipes on how to do um, like oats that are more kind of like congee. So it's basically a savory oats. So I'm definitely going to be trying that on days that I'm home. So on days that I have to go to work, I'm me, not really interested in doing that. Um, but the days I'm going to be home, I am super excited about trying some of those recipes. So what I'm going to take is just plain old oatmeal. I mean like for real plain. So it's oats and some raisins and vanilla powder. So the vanilla powder that I buy, I just bought it on Amazon. Um, did a bunch of comparisons, a bunch of looking at a bunch of different kinds. I love this stuff. It's delicious. It's wonderful. It smells so good, but it tastes really, really good too. I don't need to put any kind of sugar or anything in the oatmeal because the raisins are like super, super sweet. Um, and I don't really want to put any cinnamon in it because that vanilla flavor is like super awesome. So that's what I'm going to do for breakfast. I'm going to take that with me for when I go to work. I'm just going to make it as soon as I get to work and eat. Um, but what I'm going to do first thing in the morning, again, on non potato days is start my day out with some, a really high dose of resistant starch. So the one, the thing that is the highest in resistant starch of all the things that I could find, um, and that was talked about online was, uh, potato starch. And I think that it makes a difference probably depending upon how it's made and all that good stuff. I don't know. I'm not that, I'm not that serious about um, making sure that I've got the exact right cooking temperature on my potato starch, whatever. So I know Bob's Red Mill sells one. Um, we buy ours actually at an Asian grocery store. So next week when I go grocery shopping, I will um, show you guys that bag if I remember. If I don't remember in a couple weeks or something, just let me know. I will, I will show you guys. Um, but if you have an Asian grocery store, I would check it out there because it's super not expensive. Um, and it comes in a plastic bag inside of a plastic bag. So we just put it in a container. So I'm going to take a tablespoon of this, tablespoon of potato starch, put it in my little container. Um, one of the other things that's super high is um, some kind of psyllium type product. So I've got this left over from, um, not when I originally did my not the original time that I did the portfolio diet, but several times since then that I've done, I've included um, the aspects from the portfolio diet just in smoothies and stuff so that I keep my cholesterol level down because one size does not fit all when it comes to just having a uh, whole food plant-based diet because my cholesterol is still high if I'm not careful. So, um, and then the other thing that I put in there is the beta sterols. So this takes forever to use and it comes in a huge package. Um, so yeah, it's one teaspoon at a time. I do usually use a heaping teaspoon because that you want to get two grams a day and one teaspoon is like 1700 milligrams. So 1.7 grams. So 
a heaping teaspoon. And I include it in anything when I make a drink. Anytime I make a drink of any sort, um, I will put that in there. So, which is obviously not every day, but I try to be good. I try to get it in my diet. Um, and then the other thing that's high in resistant starch are plantains and unripe bananas. The chance of me eating an unripe banana is like zero, seriously. I'm not a huge fan of bananas, period. Um, so eating an unripe one, mm, not gonna happen. But I've got a, it's somewhat, I mean, it's not super, super ripe, which is how I, I prefer my bananas brownish, um, just to put them in stuff because it's so much sweeter. But anyways, so I'm going to mix this in here with a little bit of water and I'm going to drink this. Um, actually, not when I say a little bit, it's gonna be at least eight ounces because you don't ever wanna take psyllium with less water because then you might constipate yourself and that's not the goal ever. Well, you know, if you if you uh, go to the bathroom too often, you need to bind things up a little bit. Psyllium's great for that too. Just drink it with less water, but at least eight ounces. So I'm probably gonna do like 10 or 12 ounces because yeah, I don't wanna have any chances of that happening at all. That's a horrible idea. So I'm going to do that, going to take my oatmeal with me and I'm going to show you the soup in just a minute. Alrighty guys, so there is Turkish what is it called? Turkish red lentil soup. Um, this smells so, 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 so good. Um, I am not tried it yet, but it smells delicious. So we're going to give this a try. All right, here we go. It's very hot, but I think it'll be okay. Hmm. That's very good. Um, I did end up adding that one teaspoon of the um, garlic chili sauce, so it has got the perfect amount of spice for me. I need no more spicy than that. That's absolutely fine. For that whole entire huge pot, <laughs> that's plenty of spice. My husband might actually end up adding some more to his. But that is really, really tasty. I don't, I don't taste the mint per se, but there's definitely some under underlying flavors that are in there that I'm not actually sure it goes really well together. I would highly recommend this one, like two thumbs up, great recipe. That is not something I would ever think to put together in terms of spices. I mean, paprika and oregano, okay. Obviously I put a little less cumin in it because I don't really like cumin very much. So you guys do with that as you will, but that was really good. Okay, I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna go and t put this into my bowls to take with me for food for today. So I'm going to have, I had my drink and it was just fine. It tasted like a watery banana. It was absolutely fine. Um, so I'm going to have that, and I'm going to have my oatmeal, and soup, and soup. And then if I come home and I'm hungry, I'll eat something else, but there should be plenty of food. We'll see, I don't know. But when I get home tonight, I'm going to need to exercise. So I gotta let you guys go before this becomes like a 45 minute video. Cause yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good one. I'll see you again tonight. Alrighty guys, so I am home from work and um, soup was like super, super, super awesome. So Anthony, what did you think? Uh, it was very yummy soup. I enjoyed it a lot. You liked it? You would eat it again? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I think I both had soup today. So we're in the garage, which is a weird place to be because we're trying to put together, I bought this little mini trampoline thingy for exercising with. And um, I get gift cards from people at work for Christmas and this was just something that seemed like a good thing to purchase with a gift card because I wouldn't purchase it for myself probably. Um, and yeah. Uh, you can't put it together on a carpet because it hold, sucks in the carpet into the little bending part and you don't want to do it on the floor because it's going to scratch the hardwood floor so anyway we're in the garage cement. yes cement exactly this will have to work so anyway he's going to go put this little machine thingy together so that i can use it and uh, i will talk to you guys again tomorrow